album of the year, James? Um, at one point, right towards, I think, first lockdown, it was What the Dead Men Say by Trivium. Fantastic album from start to finish. Um, probably peak Trivium at this point. Bring Me released a fantastic album with Posthuman Survivor Horror. August Burns Red Guardians was fantastic. Suicide Silence, I think, flew under the radar with Become the Hunter. But for me, um, it was a late release, October time. But Matrifigy by Tala. Um, it's just my go-to. Every time I'm kind of out and about going anywhere and I put music on, I just seem to gravitate towards that album. Um, like in particular, like I said, Overconfidence up there in Song of the Year for me. And so many on that album could kind of be in that contention as well. It's an album that I can listen to from start to finish so many times. Like I said before earlier on, the concept um, I find fascinating. I listen to the lyrics. Max Portnoy's drum parts are fantastic. He has some lovely like mini solos in these songs. And just the elements of the whole album. To me, Matrifigy, um Oh, it's just a peak of music for me this year. Yeah, I can say from li- living with you, I hear how much you're listening to it. I, I can't describe the, the amount of times I've watched the live album release they did with Hate Five Six is ridiculous. Because um, they play the album from start to finish on that. And without having like live gigs this year, the closest we can get a lot is watching live streams of bands. And for me, like it just seeing these these songs live even though i've never seen them live now it just gets me even more excited and makes me fall in love with that album even more yeah great album dan well i've listened to a lot of albums this year obviously there's been not much else to do no live music lockdowns and that so i kind of knew that when this album came out and it came out quite early in the year that it was going to be my favorite and it's enter jakari with nothing is true and everything is possible um, there might be there might be some kind of bias to it with me being quite a long term fan of theirs, um, yeah. But this album, I'd I'd say it's a definitive album for them. It's kind of touched on a little bit of everything that they've done in all their previous albums. Uh, there's it's quite synth heavy in places. Um, there's a few moments where it gets quite dark. There's moments where it gets political. Um, but the standout moment for me is um, there's a sort of instrumental track called Reprise Three which follows on from Reprise 1 and 2 from their first album. Um, and it's basically the same little mantra that's being shouted out and then just fades perfectly into the next song, Tina. Um, it's probably the coolest thing I've heard all year. I was literally gasping when I first heard it. It's really cool that they would call back to early releases It's really well. cool. There's, there's a couple of lyrics that nod back to, to old ones as well. Yeah, I just really, really liked it a lot. Alex, what's what's the uh, album of the year for you? It is Underneath by Code Orange. This album, I mean, like I said with the song, Soil in the Rabbit Hole, it's just, the whole album's ferocious, it's so heavy, it feels like a band defining themselves to me. Um, And I mean, Dan put it best in his review that I read, um, where he called it almost like horror music. It's just so, at times it's quite almost unsettling to listen to. Um, there are like these scream sam- like screaming samples at the end of one of the songs. It kind of makes me a bit uncomfortable, but in like a really good way. Um, it's just incredible. The title track to end it as well is some of their best work. Um, yeah, I think it's just the album of the year for me. But what did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Hit subscribe so you never miss a video, and why not check out the latest episode of our podcast. Thanks for watching.